Okay, so hi everybody. I'm really sorry that we're starting a little bit late. We got a lot of technical things to line up to be, be on all these simulcasts at once. Um, really appreciate you being patient. I think it's definitely worth it for all of us. So we've got a, a guest who's uh, been brave enough to come on our show. It's Nicholas Mitchell Nicholas Gerber, and um, he's in the uh, Southeast Asia right now. We'll let him tell you more specifically if he wants to. And he's been investigating a um, situation in China that we've talked about before that Alex has talked about a lot, and that's the uh, forced organ harvesting that's going on there. And I, I recently got reminded that most people still don't know about it. Um, I had a visitor from um, the East Coast that was here a few weeks ago, and he was saying he was just in China and all the organ harvesting has stopped. He was given an official tour, and they said, see, look at all those people practicing these yoga things in the park and everything, and government is just really happy and uh, supporting what they're doing and everything. All the problems are over. It's all fine. Just relax and, you know, be glad that China is now uh, deeply embedded in, in much of the U.S. power structure, Hollywood, entertainment, media, stuff like universities. Uh, so it's all great. We're just all really happy. Everything's fine. So I thought, hmm, well, that might might be the case or might not. So let's find out. And about that time, um, Mitchell asked me to uh, come on the show, which was perfect timing. You know, nothing is by coincidence in case you haven't noticed. And uh, he said he'd asked me, reached out to me several times before. I never got any of those. And... Um, this one came right through. So it's obviously the right time. And I think um, whatever Mitchell is willing to share with us would be great. Uh, in general, you know what our theme is. It's really simple. I just, I'm interested in harmony and everybody being okay and uh, bringing back prosperity and sanity and um, mutual respect, love in the larger sense of the word, and um, seeing what the potential of life on this planet could be instead of the... Uh, kind of twisted version that the power structure is pushing for right now. So we're going to try to uh, wake up all of our awareness of what we can individually contribute to that, mainly by changing uh, the expression of our full being and not the hypnotized version that government wants us to be stuck with. So I'm um, sorry to go on so long. I just wanted to let you know the importance of this discussion and to share it everywhere and just to let you know that we're getting into some sensitive things and if we ever are not visible go find us at real.video we've already set up an account there and uh, hopefully we'll be on the air on these other ones for quite a while in the meantime so welcome Mitchell and thank you for giving us the time and for all the work you're doing and I really appreciate your presence no it's great Richard thank you and uh, I'm very glad to be here with you um, what I'd like to do to introduce you, since we've got, I think, time for this, if we use it well, is let I want people to know you as a person more so, and not just as an issue or a person talking about an issue. So let's go back to before you got into this at all and what you were doing, if you want to talk about where you were, what led you from your earlier upbringing into where you are now and what your focus is, with what, what happened. Sure. Well, I know I, that's uh, enough for eight shows, but just the part <laughs> you want to share. I'll give you the shortened version. Exactly. All right. Sure. I was, uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, thank you for you know listening to and allowing me to share about such a, such a serious topic that really affects us all as human beings. And I'll, I'll, uh, um, share with you why, uh, in, um, the segments to come, but I grew up in South Africa and then became a United States resident and citizen. Um, I'm 38 years old. I've been in international human rights and relations for over 20 years. I'm the advocacy director of uh, StopOrganHarvesting.com or doc .org and EndTransplantAbuse.org. Um, I work closely with the former Secretary of State of the Canadian Parliament, David Kilgore, and other investigators on this new form of genocide that really the world does not understand, has come to realize and become aware of on such a 
shocking level uh, as you will be in the future as human beings. And growing up in South Africa, living in America, I uh, have dedicated 20 years to advocacy, human rights. I was uh, the president of, uh, of many groups in terms of human rights. I own my own human rights organization for a while in the States. And it just compelled me uh, in 2001 when I was at a human rights fair at the University of Georgia studying international relations and business that I came across this innocent spiritual movement, which I will discuss with you and Richard um, as the show progresses. And after hearing about what happened to it and what is happening to it, along with other groups as well, particularly this group, which you're going to mention tonight, um, I was just deep inside my soul, deep inside my spirit, my conscience, my intuitiveness, I really deeply felt an urge to expose and promote and safeguard and support. Um, and many people said, you know why? You're a, a white guy, you come from a South African family, shouldn't you be concerned about just your own race or your own uh, plight? Uh, why don't just make money, indulge in lovely, beautiful uh, women and material things? And I said, yeah, that's also great and wonderful. But yet this particular practice uh, and uh, movement needed my help. And so 20 years I've devoted my time and my, uh, my life to exposing such uh, crimes against it by the Chinese communist regime in China. Okay, and I just wanted to take a second. When you, At some point in your earlier life as a kid, before you were into human rights, was there something that happened or some sequence of events that got you from that, you know, kid with everybody else into even knowing what human rights was about? I mean that it was an issue, because people, most people really don't know that, I don't think. Yes, growing up in Africa, you saw the treatment. I, I lived under the apartheid regime, and my family was also killed in the Holocaust. They had to flee um, uh, Hungary and Ukraine to South Africa. That's how where I was born. And growing up in apartheid and um, understanding from a Jewish uh, uh, perspective the suffering that went along with uh, inhumane at atrocities. And then we had, the, in, in 1994, the, 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 the genocide in Rwanda, where over nearly 800,000 Tutsis were just macheted, and we would see the bodies coming down one of our major rivers into South Africa. And just shocking human rights atrocities have occurred in Africa. And um, so just seeing this, witnessing that, um, listening to Nelson Mandela, the late great Nelson Mandela, even though he was a uh, very controversial figure, part of the Communist Party in, Ch in, in, uh, in, America, in South Africa, he changed. And when he became uh, president, I was there for five years and I really respected him for his compassion, for his ability to forgive, his ability to unite, and his ability to calm those who wanted to take action in such a brutal way. And um, since his death, I mean, South Africa has just gone to the dogs. Now we have a serious white genocide on our hands, right. taking away the farmers' uh, lands, uh, and uh, a very serious evil communist revolution going on and brewing in South Africa, where I fear for my family members still living there. Um, but yes, uh, living under Nelson Mandela's uh, rule or reign for five years, it was amazing. I mean, he changed South Africa in a very compassionate way and influenced me to do something better for humanity, where he was treated so badly and inhumanely and came out of prison and changed and said, you know what, we're going to unite South Africa. Um, you know, his history is his history, his past is his past, but a man can change and a man can admit his dishonorment and be a better person, and that's what Nelson Mandela did. And um, uh, so I, he influenced me a lot to, to, to change for the better and to not violently resist, but for, to peacefully protest, not in a passive way, but in a, um, a, uh, a way that uh, initiates change and initiates uh, trans transformation and initiates diligence in saying no to evil and standing on the right side of destiny. Okay, so I know many in the audience are probably thinking, well, we've heard all these really terrible stories about Mandela and his wife, especially. His wife more than him, really, for the people true. that knew. And um, you're saying that that was true at a certain point, and then it changed. 
and by the period that you're talking about, uh, he became an example of overcoming your past and doing something really great and spreading a different spirit. Is, do you think that's accurate? That is very accurate. Between 1990 and 1990, he was released from prison, and uh, in 1990 to 1995, he became uh, a great president. And I remember living under that. He, he changed South Africa. It was a new South Africa. Uh, the tribes were not fighting anymore. The Zulus and the Khoisas were not fighting. The ANC oh. and the uh, Kosatu and the Afrikaners. They, it, it, was, it was a time of reconciliation. It was a time of bringing, coming together. And in 1995, I left for the United States. And before that, the South Africans won the World Cup. And I remember before leaving, when we won the World Cup, it was just, when you see the movie Invictus, uh, it was such a heartfelt spirit of a new South Africa, a rainbow nation, which now is completely lost, first under President Zuma, who was so corrupt, and now under uh, Simul Ramaphosa, who is now in the pocket uh, and, the, and is, a, is a minion to the radical communist, leftist, uh, uh, brutal um, uh, ANC party, uh, which is now run by Julius Malema, who just wants to kill and steal the land and force white people off their land, just like Mugabe. Um, uh, in, in Zimbabwe. Um, so it's, it, it, I fear that South Africa is on the verge of collapse um, and a lot of people are getting ready for a serious civil war and a brutal revolution of, in, in terms of communist uh, tyranny and terror in South Africa. The last great nation uh, in, in, that hasn't fallen to, to, uh, to such an extent that the other countries in Africa have. So in what you're saying is really important and people need to realize they're, they're being taught that the only uh, really violent form of government is fascism, which is anybody who disagrees with them. And they don't, re and they think that fascists, it's all Hitler, you know. And that's true. I mean, I, ha I am close to people who were killed in the Holocaust as well, so I know the truth about what happened there. But they don't realize that people following the belief system of communism have killed many more than the fascists. And hundreds of millions have died from that. Um, it's the most violent, well, it's one, I won't say the maybe the most, but one of the most violent systems that there is. And it's always sold to the people who don't know better by offering some form of utopia. And I, I guess that's what's happening in South Africa right now. And just like the idea that you can go to paradise by doing, you know, killing all the people who are not in your religion, these people are told you can have utopia by killing all the white people, and especially the evil people who still have land and taking their land, right? That would be the best. So if um, if the old leadership that was happening in 1995 or before was still there now, if Mandela was there and brought back somehow into his previous incarnation as Nelson Mandela, what do you think he'd be doing? He would really being, be, be trying to bring people together. I think Nelson Mandela now is rolling over in his grave because the, the spirit of Nelson Mandela is gone. Uh, whatever was built uh, was, is, now, is, come, is crumbling down. Um, and it's really a very big concern. I mean, people are fleeing other countries. When I was there in Kenya doing a mission to uh, rescue and raise, raise money for children, um, I saw the engineered poverty in Kenya and you know, with the radical jihadists all, um, you know, harming and killing uh, many, many different uh, groups of, of, of ethnic uh, uh, Christians and um, up in the north and, uh, you know, the, the failed states of Nigeria and Somalia and, and other different places, Chad um, and Mali, you, you see a, a bunch of uh, uh, um, Africans fleeing into South Africa, and that's causing an uproar of South Africans as well, uh, because they don't—they're they, taking all the jobs uh, in their eyes. And uh, the, the, the Zimbabweans, such kind, hardworking people, can tell you full end about how their countries have just gone to the complete dogs, um, the, the, the Mugabe's of the world. And uh, yeah, Nelson Mandela is rolling, rolling over in his grave, realizing uh, what has gone on in that country. That. His spirit is now has died. Uh, everything that he's built has collapsed, and we're in the final stages uh, of a complete bloody 
communist civil war. And as you were saying, Richard, I, communism, evil communism, is the worst system in the world. It's killed more people than two world wars combined. It's decimated 5,000 years of Chinese, com it's Chinese traditional history. It's infiltrated into the West now, into the American left, the yeah. radical communist left, um, with Antifa and... Uh, now they're now they're openly Democrats. Mitchell, are. Mitchell, keep, Mitchell, keep going while I adjust the lighting system. It just went down, but I, I'm listening. The, the the now the the Democrats. You can notice they are openly calling for democratic socialism, which is the beginnings of communism. And I would like to ask these people to go spend one day under the communist rule in China, under the communist rule in North Korea, and see how they were lost one day with their with their unappreciative, ignorant, and naive uh, thoughts and understandings about socialism, which is the beginnings of. Uh, evil communism. It's actually written into the constitution, the so-called communist constitution that has wiped out millions of innocent people, at least 100 million people in China. And um, uh, they, they, they started with socialism. That's the disguise. That's the deception. That's the smoke and mirrors to control the people and get the people where they want. Then they take away the guns and they start force, forcing and mandating one-child policy, forced organ harvesting, political correctness, common core, um, you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't look at this. But Not they a, don't make it sound bad, right? I mean, they're experts at using speech and words. For correct. example, everybody's against hate, right? So you have to ban hate speech. And of course, just so that it's all objective and fair, the rulers have to define what hate is. Exactly, exactly. And they start uh, infiltrating into the media organizations into the governing bodies, into the media in terms of Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, and bribing and paying them off. And it, it, it's, 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 it's absolutely uh, manipulation and deception. The Chinese Communist Party, the CCP, that has controlled China for the last 50 plus years is behind it all. And this will be revealed in the future. Um, it has been revealed in the publication called the Nine Commentaries on the Communist Party. That is a free publication. It can be downloaded free of charge or watched on YouTube. Um, just type in nine N I N E commentaries on the Communist Party. Fully exposes the evilness of communism and the Communist Manifesto, starting from an import from Western, from the Western, uh, a Western import from Karl Marx, Lenin, Trotsky, through Mao, and uh, all through the communist regime, the Khmer Rouge in Cambodia and uh, now into Africa and infiltrated now into the American West, I mean, American left, uh, with a very radical ideology of um, just dividing the, the, the family, spying on your neighbors, taking away the guns, and like you said, using hate w words to manipulate people into, into, into fear-mongering them. And you notice how the American population is scared to speak out about what they feel because they get labeled. That's the, that's the beginnings of communism. That's the beginning of the real God. Scapegoating. Inciting okay, hatred. So, so where does this come from? Uh, I get the feeling that there are people on the very top level engineering this. And then they are sophisticated enough where they will give different motivations to the different levels of people under them that they need to complete the project. So at the very bottom where nobody understands what's happening at all, they're actually believing that the evil free market people have been hiding the truth from them, which is that everybody really should just get everything free. And it's been suppressed that that could be possible. So they say, the, we're going to give you free health care, free place to live, free basic income, um, free whatever you need, you know, some free food or whatever. It's going to be great. And I, I think those are the, that's the low-level motivation that people who, who really have no understanding of what's going on is happening, right? Yes, at the cost of their lives. Yeah. Well, yeah, and except for that, it's going to be great. Exactly. And yeah. that's why, uh, you know, mentioning about, and I'm glad I've come on your show to share about this, and we can get into it if you'd like more and more, um, about the Falun Gong, the ancient traditional mind and body and spiritual practice that was targeted uh, by the communist regime. And all through the periods, ever since Mao Zedong all the way up to now, there has been a evil campaign of 
destroying anything that has any uh, power outside of the communist control. And um, because there have been movements like the, the, the Great Cultural Revolution under Mao Zedong with 40 million uh, people uh, were killed just in China alone, and then it's it, it trickled into into Vietnam and other country, and other countries because Vietnam borders China, where three million uh, Vietnamese were killed under the Great Cultural Revolution, and then you had the Khmer Rouge, who was a Maoist Marxist uh, dictator, where at least three to four million. A Cambodians were wiped out, and I actually went to see the, the, the killing fields. When you have a regime, a reign of terror, a demon specter, as sinister as this, this is the source, this is the axis of evil. It's not North Korea, it's not Russia, it's America and China, the, the, the eagle and the, and the dragon. And the dragon know, I, I, had, I just want to interject, I'm not sure if it was really 40 million, I got figures of 80 million, so, you know, it's somewhere in there. Absolutely. No, absolutely. 100%. Communism has killed countless millions. I mean, it, it is the most violent and evil system on the face of the earth. And, uh, and with um, the communist regime, the Chinese Communist Party, the CCP, this evil sway of terror that was, was brought into China in 1949, the Mao Zedong, as a Western import from Karl Marx and uh, the Politburo and the Gang of Scoundrels from the Paris Commune, uh, in, in in the 40s and then moved into, into China, like I said, it has decimated over 5,000 years of Chinese ancient traditional culture, Vietnamese culture, uh, Cambodian culture. Um, it has wiped out millions of innocent people, targeted Christians, Uyghur Muslims. Well, so basic, basically anybody that might be a potential dissenter, right? Is, is that who gets killed? Exactly, exactly. So and that means if they if they did kill 80 million in China... That means that people were really not accepting it voluntarily. There, exactly. were, there was a lot of resistance, or they wouldn't have had to kill them. Exactly, and that's why Taiwan was formed. Taiwan was formed because of that exact resistance you're talking about. And then you've got the, Q, the Kuomintang, which was the, the KMT, which is the, the resistance force, which is pretty much right now up in, uh, in, 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 the, in the northern Thailand, uh, uh, Burma border, and also... Um, uh, also, in, in something also uh, in Vietnam, where the Chinese who were against this resistance and feared being killed and murdered fled, and that's why you know the reason why you have Taiwan, the small little country which is <laughs> which is targeted by China, and it's such an admirable country because it's fought against and stood up against this evil tyrant, the reign well, of terror. Isn't that isn't that where Chiang Kai-shek got forced to run for asylum? And, exactly. and that was because the U.S. was putting in Mao and the whole Maoist movement and trying to uh, take over the whole country. The Rockefellers particularly, yes. Yeah, yeah using CIA elements, things like that. Wow. And, and I think this part of the discussion, even though it's not exactly on organ harvesting and Falun Gong quite yet, is super important because what would be great is anybody that's not totally lost and hypnotized by the American communist movement, which is Antifa, and what's called the left, which is just a label. Anybody that is being offered free everything and told that you weren't told that everything should be free because you're being suppressed, and especially if your skin's not light enough, then you're really being suppressed. You're a, a victim just by definition of your skin color, which is complete nonsense. Uh, anybody that's tempted to fall for that movement that the American media is trying to make universal and they're playing that that they're on the left and the right and they're both arguing really for communist ideas. It's important to see through that hoax. It doesn't mean you should join another label or a side and say, oh no, I'm not going to be a leftist, I'm going to be a rightist or something. It's that forget the labels, be a human, you know, then you don't fall for this kind of stuff. Exactly. And the, uh, and when you hear about the identity politics, it's all cultural Marxism, the, the race baiting, uh, Black Lives Matter, these are all, these are all cultural Marxist uh, tools, uh, political correctness. Um, they, 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 they're underhandedly inciting hatred and dividing the races, the genders, the religions um, through cultural Marxism. And yeah, you, you nailed it, Richard. It's very important to see that. So yeah. on the on the top level, the people that start this, that engineer it, that do the strategy, um, what do you think their goal is? Why do they Why do they put all that effort into doing that? 
and, and George Soros is a big funder of it. It's billions and billions of dollars to support this and fund this cultural Marxist uh, uh, reign of terror uh, that's infiltrating into America as we speak. Yeah. Because they want to destroy the Constitution. They want to destroy, uh, depopulate millions of innocent, billions of innocent people to control them with a communist-style system of mainland China. The yeah. globalists love the communist-style system. The Rockefellers love it. The Rothschilds love it. The George Soros loves it. They love this because it's the only system that has worked to destroy millions of people and control the life force of the 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 the, 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 the human being. And uh, they, they they are trying now so desperately to do it in America, but they won't succeed. They will not succeed right. because little do they know. Little do they know that the communist regime was on the verge of complete collapse in China. There's a huge huge collapse coming very soon which luckily is divine intervention. Um, uh, wait and see. It's, it's, going to, it's going to be a very interesting three to five years coming up. Yeah, yeah I completely agree. I, I just, I really want to hope that there's as many people in America and the UK and other places that are really targeted right now um, by the globalists using communism, using all these different belief systems really for the same thing, enslavement and extermination. It, it, the, the rest is details. Exactly. And, if so, they can not fall for that, that would be better. And if, and if I might add, the modern thinking, the liberal way of thinking, is the way they indoctrinate, especially the university students in these liberal universities, to go along with their plan. And they are becoming the red guards in the brown shirts of Nazi Germany, the red guards of communist China, and they don't even know it. Right. They don't even know it. And, and it's not, we're not promoting the right, because there are pe crazy people on the right who have their stereotyped ideas, and they can't imagine that taking care of the environment and the earth is, has any consequence at all. Um, yes. And then the left makes believe they believe they think it does, the, the people on top of that, but they're just making you feel sorry for environmental issues which are real in order to give up your rights and, and be controlled. So there's right. something in between that's not even on that spectrum at all, that is what they don't want you to remember, and so we do want you to remember that. Exactly, and this is all coming from the play, play by play, out of the playbook of the communist regime, and the communist manifesto, and the communist constitution as out of uh, in communist China. It's all it's all written in blood, and that's the very very sad thing about it. Um, yeah, it's essentially a religion, but a religion is anything that you can't question, and if you do. They just may have to eliminate you. And, and it reminds me, in the 60s in America, this was being done too by the Communist Party at that time as, as groups such as the Weather Underground, which was infiltrated by Larry Grathwell and others. And they talked about having to send everybody to re-education camps and uh, to learn the new religion, which was communism. And uh, the people that wouldn't go along with it which they estimated be about 25 million, they just have to kill those guys. Yeah. Co it's communist the same thing worldwide. Exactly. And the, the Chinese Communist Party, uh, it, it is an extremist. It, it, it's worse than, uh, than ISIS. It's worse than any known dictatorship. Like there's a saying in history that many empires uh, have ki uh, um, killed in order to conquer. The Chinese Communist Party, a demon cult, conquered in order to kill their entire mission, their entire essence, I don't even want to use the word essence because it's so despicable, but their entire nature is about bloodlust. Bloodlust sucking the, 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 the marrow out of the human being and replacing it with complete, utter robotic control and, 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 and terrorizing people to the point that they will destroy themselves. And then once they've destroyed themselves, whatever is left, the communist regime will just eat them all alive for their own bloodlust. Right. It, it's a perfect um, subgroup of what you call the globalists, who, at the top of which is just the agenda for complete extermination, including right. themselves. And, and a lot of people don't get that. But the communist uh, religion is really playing a valuable part in that whole movement, which people just need to wake up and see through it. So um, the people that practice Falun Gong are probably the biggest group that is presenting a, an impediment to the complete victory of the communist uh, agenda. So why don't you spend some time now for the people that don't know what Falun Gong is and explain as much about it as you can. 
Uh, I'll be glad to. Well, uh, everybody, um, Falun Gong is an ancient, traditional Chinese meditation, mind, body, and spirit practice. It's very similar to Chinese yoga, Tai Chi. It's a way of life, a meditation, and there's no organization, there's no uh, uh, dogma, it's free of charge. Um, it's an ancient, like I said, a Chinese spiritual discipline. It's pronounced Falun Gong, also known as, yes, Falun Gong, you, uh, or, or Falun Dafa is the other name. It's the same practice, just two different names. And it's a highly effective way to improve spiritual vitality, health, and um, before China, and I brought up the medical, the medical documents, I found it very interesting. There was a survey, if I may read, uh, that was made in, in 1998 in China. Uh, it's surely, I probably will not find it anymore on the Chinese website because the content of Falun Gong is strictly controlled. Uh, but to determine the health effect, effects of Falun Gong, a group of Chinese professionals and researchers conducted a survey among some Falun Gong practitioners in five districts in Beijing with about 13,000 valid questionnaires. And according to the survey, out of 13,000, about 94% had ill conditions, and um, through learning and practicing Falun Gong, the health conditions improved to various degrees. I mean, you would see throughout the land uh, of China from 1992 to 1998, one out of every 12 Chinese national citizens, ladies and gentlemen, practicing these four, uh, these four simple standing exercises and one meditation, so five exercises in total, and following a universal philosophy of truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance. And this mushroomed to become the largest spiritual movement and Qigong practice in all of China. And uh, according to... Wait, tell me how it's connected to Qigong, be, you know, before we forget that too, because that's really important, I think. Yes, absolutely. It's the highest form of Qigong, where Qigong works with energy channels and the modalities of the human body. Falun Gong does the same thing, whereas where you first, you first practice the first exercise, which is stretching the body and then immediately relaxing, you are blocking all the energy channels, allowing your blood to circulate much more freely and much more healthier to the organs, which will then rejuvenate the organs. And Qigong uses energy channels and a state of mind that improves the morality of the human being. So with Falun Gong, as you improve your morality, do better in business, are kinder to your wife or husband, you uh, um, are, uh, are, are, are more compassionate or more truthful, your morals rise and your body becomes healthier because the mind always, or the body always follows the mind. And... Um, Mr. Li uh, Hong Tsi, who founded the practice, uh, he was nominated by, for five Nobel Peace Prizes, nominated for the European Parliament for the Sakharov Prize for Freedom of Thought, and also a recipient of the Freedom House's International Religious Freedom Award. How um, do you spell his name? Uh, L I, and then H O N G Z I Z H I. Now, uh, Mr. Li Hong Tsi, um, for the, the, the propaganda of, of, uh, against Falun Gong, and this is why it's so much, because um, with Falun Gong, after becoming the largest spiritual practice in China, and even according to the, the China's National Sports Commission, they were speaking with U.S. News and World Report uh, in 1999, before the persecution began in July 20th, declared that Falun Gong can save each person a thousand yuan in annual medical fees. They, uh, they said if a hundred million people are practicing it, which government estimates between 1990, uh, by 1998 said that between 70 and 100 million people were practicing Falun Gong, um, that, um, the, uh, that, that that would be about at least a hundred billion yuan saved per year in medical fees. And the president, the, the former premier, uh, was very happy about that. And also, the China's military, Ministry of Public Security praised Mr. Li's contributions in 1998 and, 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 uh, and before the persecution but, uh, in promoting the traditional crime-fighting virtues of the Chinese people, in safeguarding social order and security, and in, promote, in, prom in promoting rectitude in society. However, the then leader of the Communist Party, Jiang Zemin, now, not many people know about that name, Richard, and everybody. Uh, Jiang Zemin, the former president and leader of the Chinese Communist Party, 
uh, he was seeking a way of, of consolidating his own power because he was very hateful and jealous that he couldn't control the hearts and the minds of at least 10% of the population of China by 1999. Uh, they were practicing Falun Gong. Um, and it's crucial to understand that when the communist regime wants to eliminate something or someone, there is no limit to how far they will go. Um, so they started to call Falun Gong through their propaganda machines, which now at least a billion dollars a year, one quarter at least of China's gross domestic profit for the last 19 years, has tried to uh, demonize Falun Gong, demonize Mr. Li as some CIA agent, some evil cult leader, a sinister group that kills themselves. They actually even staged a Hollywood-style self-immolation in Tiananmen Square that, said that, that, that forced four people and a little girl, a 12-year-old girl, to set themselves on fire and wow. say that this is what Falun Gong does. And I've been a Falun Gong practitioner, ladies and gentlemen, Richard, for almost uh, 16 years. You can see I'm not a cult person, um, very healthy. You can see how I am, how, I, how, how, how sincere I am. I like business. I like enjoying love. I like going out and having a good time with my friends. I don't stray away from my family. Um, but this is the kind of propaganda that was infiltrated into the mainstream media and the world media when everyone wanted to know what Falun Gong was really about. What was this life force? What was this magic uh, uh, opiate that was um, uh, creating such health efficacies and su reducing the suicide rates, reducing, the, uh, the, 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 the reducing aging, where people were walking free of illnesses, it was curing cancer. I mean, the, the, the testimonies, the health uh, researching, uh, I mean, you, you can't believe there was, another, there was another survey conducted, I mean, from China to an observational cohort study on terminal cancer survivors practicing Falun Gong. They collected reports from Chinese cancer patients between 2000 and 2015 via web platform, including diagnosis and Falun Gong practice during the, the duration. And the actual survey uh, to report date, uh, the symptom improvement and quality of life, all reports were reviewed by two physicians and the web data using the search terms late stage and cancer were found 460 perspective uh, cases and their conclusions were that they observed that the following on practice can help terminal cancer patients survive significantly longer in addition to notable symptom improvements. Um, so from leukemia to tuberculosis to MS to, muscular, to hepatitis, everything was just becoming more healed uh, through practicing Falun Gong. And uh, even the, co the Chinese government praised Falun Gong. I praise Falun Gong for helping my benefits for stop smoking, stop drinking, being kinder, being more gentle, being more focused in work, sleeping better at, 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 at night, uh, breathing better, and my joints work better. I can... I can, you know, like I said, I, can, I feel much more positive. People like to be around me. My energy levels are higher. So it's just a pregnant woman. I was doing a, um, a, 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 I was getting research, investigating the research of pregnant women, and the metabolic processes and the, the DNA changes in non Falun Gong practitioners versus Falun Gong practitioners, people who were practicing Falun Gong and the exercises for three to five to six months to a year. And one of the ladies I was, uh, one of the doctors who worked at the Virginia Medical Institute um, uh, shared with me how they saw significant improvements and on the health of the child and the baby when it was born, on the mother and the cell and metabolic and DNA uh, 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 improvements as well. Just incredible, reducing of tumor growths uh, and uh, energy levels increasing. So this overall was just in an incredible uh, benefit to the world and to China, but yet on the fateful day of, 2000, of, two, of July 20th, 1999, the former president, Jiang Zemin, completely outlawed the practice, demonized them, slandered them, dehumanized them, vilified them, and then started to send um, countless numbers of people, at least hundreds and thousands to... to uh, uh, state-mandated uh, labor camps and, 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 and hospitals, cutting out their organs, their healthy organs while alive, then selling the organs as the healthiest organs in the world illegally without any consent, and then burning the, 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 the bodies of the, of the Falun Gong in the boiler rooms of the hospitals to conceal the evidence, and then also selling the bodies and plasticizing them uh, 
and selling them to the Body World ex ex exhibitions that are touring the United States, Europe, and currently Vietnam, where I am right now. So this is the extent, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to. to and if if you would like, Richard, we can we can get into our clips. I know I don't know how much time we have, but the we first have, clip. Yeah, share. plenty of time. That that would be good. You know, because people think it's so inconceivable that this is going on. Harvesting of organ organs. We've heard this, you know, in 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 uh, in, uh, in India. People say it's happening in Israel, where actually Israel was the first one, first country to ban organ tourism from China, um, and then came Taiwan, and then came uh, Spain, and now has come Italy. Only four medical associations, uh, ladies and gentlemen. But think about that. That's only four out of how many countries in the world, um, and. You know, unfortunately, the the World Health Organization, because they have been infiltrated by the communist mouthpiece, the former deputy of the uh, of, of the communist regime's minister of health, um, uh, Huy, uh, uh, um, I forgot his name. Hu uh, 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 I'm not sure what his name. Forgive me. Okay, but he, you'll think of it. He, I'll think of it. Um, Hui Jongfung, I think his name is, he has become the uh, uh, high-ranking member of the World Health Organization, and they have turned their backs and refuted the evidence that this is going on. Same with the United Nations, where Doctors Against Forced Organ Harvesting, DAFOH.org, a ban of doctors, um, have just withdrawn the over 3 million signatures to the United Nations twice because of the silence uh, and complicity of the United Nations uh, to remain silent in what's going on in China. So they withdrew the petitions to prove to the world, to show the world what the United Nations is doing, as well as the aiding of the, uh, and abetting of the Vatican, holding uh, uh, seminars and, and panel discussions of how to improve the organ donations and, and safeguarding organ transplantation. And how they are saying, no, it's not going on, we're all banned. The, 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 the transplantation uh, society is also saying, no, it's not going on in China, which is absolutely rubbish. It's absolutely nonsense. It's smoke and mirrors and a deception that is pulling the world out of the people's eyes. Just like they said that Nazi Germany, what are you talking about? We're not killing Jews until the Americans and the Russians liberated the camps. We're not, we're not killing Tutsis here until... The, 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 the world came to see how the bodies were piled up, even in, in Cambodia. Only after the liberation has, expo has been exposed, only after history has repeated itself, do people wake up and say, you know what, I should have paid attention to this. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad you are, you are, you are sharing with us now, you are listening to us now, because it's, you know, there, there are so many people, even on the mainstream media, Richard, and that's why I take my hat off to you, that have turned their backs and have said nothing and have stayed silent because we have all the evidence. The evidence is all out there, and that's what I'm about to play for you right now, the BBC, where in 2013, as early as 2006, actually, David Kilgore and David Mattis, two honorable esquires out of Canada, confirmed the allegations that between 60 to between 45 and 65,000 Falun Gong practitioners were harvested alive in China, and now their numbers are much higher, between 60 and 1,000 a year, uh, and uh, they join forces with Ethan Gutman. Um, Be between I, what? Say that number again. How much? Uh, bet between 60 and 100,000 Falun Gong practitioners were harvested alive um, by um, the communist regime. Now, they don't want me to talk too much about the numbers because they really don't have a specific solid concrete number as of yet. Right. They yeah. want to... They want to leave it to at least 100,000 per year uh, in terms of transplants, 100,000 transplants per year. It's about 1.5 million uh, organs per year. Um, but at least when, when Falun Gong started to be persecuted, the Lagar system, which is the labor camp system, skyrocketed. I mean, it, it boomed in China. And there's at least between three to four million, uh, and that's a low figure, low board number, compared to the 70 to 100 million following on practitioners that were, 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 were around in 1999. Uh, three to four million have been um, locked up in, in, in labor camp systems around China, as we, as we know of. And th from that, you know, at least 20% a year have been harvested. So their numbers were between 60 to 1,000 to 100,000 a year. 
um, and it could be much higher, but we leave it at about 100,000 transplants a year until they get the specific number because it's so hard to believe and so inconceivable that they don't want to sensationalize anything or exaggerate anything specifically for the top critics and now that they're going around the world even more so with the governing bodies um, to say uh, what they need to say. But if I may, I, I'll play that clip because I think the, the, the audience would like to hear it. You want to get you want to give an introduction to what it is? Absolutely. It was a BBC clip. There are seven clips, ladies and gentlemen, that I put together for 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 for, for the kindness of Richard Show. Um, and the first clip is from Ethan Gutman and David uh, Kilgore, the two main investigators. They have confirmed the allegation allegations that this is true. David Kilgore is the former Secretary of State to the Asian Affairs of the Canadian Parliament. And with his colleague, David Mattis, wrote a book called Bloody Harvest. Their report called the Kilgore and Mattis Report can be viewed online uh, free of charge in a publication. There is an update to that through Ethan Gutman and his book, The Slaughter, that can be read uh, at endtransplantabuse.com. Dot org, endtransplantabuse.org. Um, and these two gentlemen came on the BBC in 2013. And I think it's very, very uh, uh, important to hear what they have to say. It's about a six minute clip, but uh, if I would like, if, you, if I can play it, that would be great. Yeah, let's go. Okay. We talk uh, a rather upsetting issue, uh, allegations that uh, have uh, repeatedly been aired that China uh, plays a part in harvesting organs, uh, mainly of executed prisoners. Um, the numbers run to thousands every year. Uh, the uh, organs then get sold on for transplants. Um, it's always been vehemently denied by the Chinese government. But here in Britain, representatives of a campaign called Forced Organ Harvesting have been looking at the issue and they've gone as far as presenting their latest findings to the British Parliament to representatives join us here in the studio welcome to david kilgore former member of the canadian parliament and ethan goodman uh, author of several books on china who've both been involved in the investigations are here to tell us a little bit more uh, david uh, kilgore if i could start with you um what are the latest findings of your investigation what are you closing in on uh that about well about sixty five thousand falun gong practitioners have been killed and their organs trafficked uh there are other people too, uh, convicted prisoners uh, are, are killed, of course, but uh, the thing that we're focusing on is the Falun Gong community. My, my colleague Ethan Gutman has, has done a lot of work on the Uyghur community. He'll probably want to say something about that, but yeah, there, there's no doubt. We have 52 kinds of evidence that this is, uh, this is happening. To give you the easiest example, uh, uh, the wife of a surgeon told us that her husband had removed the corneas from 2,000 Falun Gong practitioners in a two-year period. So, I mean, there's absolutely no doubt in anybody's mind. We've written, we've got two books on it, we've got all kinds of... And these, here. just to clarify, these come after judicial executions? No, no, there is no judicial involvement in virtually all of the Falun Gong. That's the thing that nobody understands. Okay, right. So, we better clarify this because we often cover the fact that China, of course has one of the highest rates of execution yeah. judicial execution it's their choice that's what yeah. they do uh, and they're always there in the top three along with yep. saudi arabia and yep. iran but yep. this is something different exactly it's because a police signature is all you need to get sent to a forced labor camp and then basically what happens is somebody from it could be london it could be canada goes over there for a liver and uh, they uh, there's a computer bank and it says there's a match for for you out in camp number 50 and somebody's dragged out of the cap number 50 into an operating room, their liver's taken out of them, it's flown to Shanghai where you're probably waiting for your liver, and you come back to London with a new liver, and somebody has been killed like a, a lobster in a grotesque restaurant. Hang on a minute, so you're not even saying, because, I mean, it's one issue, the judicial executions and the use of the cadaver, mm -hmm. uh, which I suppose in a certain legal sense is the property of the state, once the state has mm -hmm. killed the individual. But you're saying these are people being killed to order? <laughs> Precisely. And it's, it's, it's so, as you say, your horror shows how, how uh, distressing it is. But yet it never gets mentioned uh, that these are people who've been maybe giving out pamphlets asking them to stop killing Falun Gong and they're, they're guilty of nothing. Ethan Goodman, also here. Can we step back uh, just a moment before we talk mo a little more about this? I, I, I want to find out that there is a shortage uh, of organs uh, because people don't donate them? Is that why? What are the cultural reasons why there is this kind of shortfall that fuels this market that you allege you have evidence for? Well, there is a short, a cultural shortfall, but that's in part because the Chinese uh, government has never really promoted it. They didn't have to. They have this massive supply, possibly, you know, up to three million prisoners out there. Uh, you know, of those prisoners, uh, perhaps... 
25-30% are prisoners of conscience. Some people who aren't even in the system, never even registered into it. They just kind of they've disappeared. These are people who often even don't give their names to protect their families or their locations. These people are prime candidates for organ harvesting. Now, uh, the allegation is, I mean, it's, it's left me open-jawed, what you've just said. Um, I have to ask you more precisely, what evidence do you have? Who have you spoken to, for example, who is actually involved in this trade that you allege is there? Start in the beginning. In 1995, there's a man in this city, Enver Totti, who you can uh, interview yourself. Uh, I suggest you bring him on the program. He performed a live organ harvesting of a prisoner who'd been shot in the left side of the chest in a right, non-lethal right, right. way, uh, and uh, he removed the kidneys and liver from this man. Uh, so you can start with that, okay. that acknowledgement, and then you can go to the massive evidence of prisoners, uh, particularly Falun Gong, who were examined in uh, Laogai and under extremely primitive conditions, and they're being tortured and they're not being fed and so on, but then they're taken to a modern hospital, just the Falun Gong. And there, they look carefully at their corneas, not their eyesight, just their corneas. So, in effect, these, you, you allege that these prisoners are being catalogued for what might be saleable or useful as, as a body part. No, I think we're alleging that they've, they've been harvested at, at a scale of possibly, you know, 10 to 15 percent of these prisoners of conscience. Okay. Uh, how does the market operate? Who controls it, therefore? <laughs> I think there we've got a lot. I think there's where the work needs to be done is how is this market operated? As I understand it, there was a doctor, a, uh, a surgeon in, in Taiwan, uh, who was well aware of this because he used to argue for the Chinese price for his patients. And they said, well, you know what? We really love you, the other doctor said. So we're going to give you the Chinese price. Not only that, we're giving you all Falun Gong. These people don't smoke, they don't drink, they don't have hepatitis. And I asked him that question. Well, how's this done? He said it through sort of an informal eBay system in China. Right. So if there's an informal system, this also means that ultimately the Chinese government can deny any involvement, in it, which they always have done. Yeah, they've it, said that they've been made aware of some of these problems and they have taken action to systematically root this out. That's what they've always said. But there's one problem. Briefly? Yes. The six, uh, six high-ranking officials uh, checked into an Urumqi hospital. Uh, in 1997, and they were waiting for organs. A young doctor was told to go into the uh, prisoner, political prisoner wing of the, the Uyghur prison, Uyghur, I'm sorry, Uyghur, and there he uh, had to examine the blood of all the political prisoners for these six high-ranking officials. China's a surveillance state. It, well, it's going on yeah. now, though, you're saying? That's an it's example a, from 1997. We're now in 2013. But this so. is a surveillance state, and who gets watched? The medical hospitals, the military, the party members. Well, many thanks indeed. And that was in 2013, Richard. That's right. going on. Five years. Um, one little comment I would want to make based on something they said, talking about why is there a shortage of organs for people that need them. And they're talking about, well, the Chinese government isn't promoting it to get it from legitimate sources and that sort of thing. That could be true, but in my experience, um, as a health researcher, you know, for the last 50-some years, I, I would say that the primary reason there's a shortage of uh, organs for transplant is really because of the suppression of real health information that would make the transplants unnecessary. Just wanted to throw that in there. Interesting. Yes, and, um, I, and, to, and to add, you know, the Chinese culture is one that does not um, allow for the body to have... To, they, they only want the body intact, the traditional culture of the Chinese, but only... From the communist regime's reign of terror, will they do something as dreadful as this? The, the, the normal Chinese, I think it's more like the Rastafarian culture when I was in, Japan, in Jamaica. They want, that's why Bob Marley never amputated his, his, his toe when, he, when the cancer spread throughout his entire body, because they believe also in their culture that the body should be intact from, from life after death. So, just for the, for, for, for the sake of um, them being killed for their organs this is unfathomable. It goes completely against the traditional culture of China, which is the intention of the Chinese communist regime to do. Just like in the left, in, in, on the radical left, in, in, or the radical, uh, uh, well, on the radical left in America, to destroy the constitutional values, to destroy the traditional values, to destroy the, the family, to uh, uh, incite hatred. It's all from the communist playbook. Break the spirit. Right. Break the spirit, yeah, break the spirit. 
Um, if I may, I would like to just play another uh, clip from um, Edward Beckman Scott, who is the former vi uh, the vice president of the European Parliament. And I think his uh, his um, uh, testimony will definitely uh, irk some people and uh, pick up some ears, if I may. Yeah, sure. That sounds good. Okay. Edward McMillan Scott. Thank you very much indeed, Peter. Um, I uh, wrote a report on EU-China relations uh, in 1996-7 for the Foreign Affairs Committee and returned to Beijing in 2006, where I met uh, ex-prisoners of conscience, Falun Gong practitioners, as well as uh, made contact with a number of other dissidents and reformers. All the Chinese with whom I had contact were then imprisoned and in some cases, like Gao Zhisheng, tortured. Gao Zhisheng is a Christian human rights lawyer, very, very well known in China, who investigated the persecution of Falun Gong and wrote reports about it. And one of the people I met, Cao Dong, who had been in prison, told me the story about how his best friend had disappeared one evening from the cell in their prison. And the next time he saw him, it was his body in the prison hospital with holes where body parts have been extracted. The belief that I have, <clears throat> and I share with David Kilgore, that organ harvesting is widespread in China and it is restricted almost exclusively to Falun Gong practitioners. The only prisoners in China who are routinely blood tested and blood pressure tested are Falun Gong practitioners. The organ transplant industry is in the hands of the military. The People's Liberation Army is responsible for the uh, hospitals, the transportation of body parts, and the sale of them. It is therefore a governmental activity and constitutes genocide under Article 2 of the Genocide Convention. It is as serious as that. And my final word is, with respect to you, Peter, the Falun Gong are to the Chinese regime of today what the Jews were to the Nazis during the war. And we should all take note of this and look at China with new eyes. The European Parliament uh, comes from a very diverse background. And as Peter has already said, even within this quite straightforward resolution, there are still problems because the absolute deluge of propaganda from the regime in Beijing vilifying Falun Gong as some sort of extremist cult. Now, I've met, as I said, hundreds of members of Falun Gong. It is not a sect, it is not a cult, there is no money involved, there is no uh, brainwashing. All the normal characteristics of a cult simply don't exist. These are people who practice their uh, spiritual exercises uh, on their own, and yet, as I said, because between 70 and 100 million people in 1999 were practicing Falun Gong. This was seen by Jiang Zemin, then the, the, the leader of the Communist Party, as a threat to his own position. It wasn't, of course, but he saw the opportunity of creating an enemy within. Just as during the war, the Nazis singled out the Jews as a special character, characteristic and did what they did to the Jews. The same is happening today, today to Falun Gong in China. That is why it is genocide. That's why I say it's so serious. As to whether we can con convey this to all the members of the European Parliament, it's quite difficult. It is quite difficult, but we're trying. And that's what this press conference is about. There'll be other activities today and beyond. And that was there, that was Edward McMillan Scott at the European Parliament. Yeah, so let, let's let's look at his last statement. Getting the members of the European Parliament to grasp this is very difficult. Why? I mean, it, it should be really simple issue. So, what do you think on a deeper level is why they apparently can't understand it? Um, bribes and payoffs, economic pressures, economic uh, political pressures. I remember when I was at the University of Georgia State in uh, one of the top business schools in America as early as 2001, and I was trying to get together and organize a human rights group specifically to uh, support, to bring a voice of support for Falun Gong and to stop this persecution to raise awareness. I didn't even know by that time that the organ harvesting was going on. I just remember, I just knew about the, four, the brutal persecution. And I met with a lot of resistance. I mean, you couldn't believe I had to go to the history departments, the political departments, and no professor wanted to touch it. And one of the professors said to me, 
The reason why through closed doors, as did the students of the Chinese associations, they were on scholarships and visas, um, tourist visas to, or student visas to study, took me aside and said, we support you, we want to do things for you, with you, and we, we want to learn the truth, but we're so scared that the communist regime will hurt our families in China. The political professor, who had no ties to China in terms of their, their, uh, their families, said to me, well, it's because of political pressures, because otherwise we're going to lose our grants. The communist regime has, has embedded itself into the American and the European uh, uh, economic, political, and social spectrum so much that you can see just through the American youth how it has poisoned the minds of the youth, especially the university students in the liberal com- uh, uh, colleges, which are communist indoctrination camps, basically. And the professors, not just the and students. The and the professors, and now the, de- the, the, the democratic senators are coming up and, 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 and outright calling for democratic socialism. I mean, this is the extent to why and how and the proof of why people turn their backs. And, and I've reached out to a lot, especially on the left, I've reached out to a lot, and they all claim their virtual signaling, hypocrisy, and their fake compassion about all these, and not to say that the right is any, any better, but I have received a lot better support from the right, from the alt-right, and especially from the underground resistance movements and um, the so-called conspiracy <laughs> theorist shows. Yeah. Um, more heart, more spirit, and more soul than ever before. And I think that's the biggest thing I, I, that I really would love to see happen, that people really grasp the severity of this. And when you hear Ed McMillan Scott, and when you hear uh, Anastasia Lynn, who is Miss World 2015-2016, and, and who couldn't participate in 2017 Miss World in uh, China because she practices Falun Gong, and her father practices Falun Gong, her testimony is, is incredible. I'd like to play that for you, if I may. Um, I like that, yeah. That she's, sounds great. She's wonderful. But yes, because of the political pressure, because of the economic pressure, and the contractual obligations that would be cut if anyone said anything about Falun Gong. So you, you see now, because the morality is so low, and the degeneration of the, of the mind is so popular, and atheism and communism is such a trend, you will see people take more of a of 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 a of a, of a um, profiteering aspect over a humanitarian uh, uh, relief. It's like, like a kind of blackmail in a way. Yes, because, or very similar because they're saying, "Well, do whatever you want, but if you talk about this, we'll just have to, um, you know, harass your family or do yes. something to your relatives in China or cut your grants or whatever." Uh, it's not like show a picture of you with a kid, which it is to control the senators and everything. But it's more like uh, we'll just do this list of things to you. So go ahead, do whatever you want, and nobody's willing to. Exactly. And all the presidents have uh, know about this, the Justice Department, the State Department, the European Parliament. This has been going on for 20 years, Richard. I mean, mm-hmm. since 2006, the allegations have been confirmed in publications, 52 points of evidence, two or three books have already been published, I mean, and you'll hear from this world, from the testimonies. I mean, I've been doing this for 19 years and still silence. And that's why, again, sir, I take my hat off to someone like you and your listeners for listening in and, 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 to, and to just discern the, 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 and, and hear the truth because there's so much propaganda about demonizing Falun Gong and demonizing Mr. Li Hongzi, who is a beautiful, ancient, or beautiful, genuine teacher who has asked for no money, the, f- the practice is for free, the exercises are for free, the books are all for free online, and um, you can practice wherever you are in the world. You don't have to leave your family. There's no You want to come and practice, you don't want to practice, just to benefit the society, and this is what evil does. But no matter what happens, good will always triumph over it. So without further ado, let me play some of this world uh, testimony. Good. For today, many of you probably heard about the horrific organ transplant abuse in China, including reports that Falun Gong practitioners and other prisoners of conscience are killed to supply the lucrative trade in human body parts. I first learned about these allegations uh, nearly a decade ago when David Matus and David Kilgore and also the Miss World Canada 2003, Nazanin F. Xinjiang, were speaking about it in Vancouver. 
But it took me a long time to nearly confront the gravity of this crime, to consider deeply what it means um, that tens of thousands or perhaps hundreds of thousands of innocent people are being killed for their organs. The first time I was made to grapple seriously with this issue was when I starred in a film called The Bleeding Edge, which is based on true events. In it, I played a Falun Gong practitioner imprisoned for her beliefs who was tied to an operation table as her vital organs are removed to be sold for a profit. Acting in this scene required me to imagine what this process would be like from the standpoint of a victim. And I had to imagine the sheer terror of knowing that death was imminent. It was a feeling of utterly helplessness of being at the mercy of a cold-blooded murderer who would show me none. On the street, if someone assaults you and steals your purse, you can scream for help. Tied to a hospital bed in a surgical room of a labor camp, no one can hear you scream. In China, it is a state itself that is involved in organ stealing. As I considered this crime while preparing for my film's performance, I felt engulfed by the profound vulnerability and the injustice of it all. So it was a turning point for me, which made me realize that it is, I feel that it is my duty to do all in my power to generate awareness about this issue. And I hope that you will feel the same after today's hearing. One of the factors that may made it difficult to really grasp the magnitude of these crimes is that the victims, Falun Gong practitioners, are still not very well understood. Despite being among the most severely persecuted group in China, perhaps it is harder to really sympathize with them, um, with these people whose beliefs are rather foreign. So today I would like to shed some light on what Falun Gong really is and uh, why they are being persecuted by the Communist Party. Falun Gong is many things, uh, a set of meditation exercises, a moral code, and a way of life. If you have seen people practicing it in the park or in front of European Union today, you may have noticed that the exercise and meditation forms are very similar to Tai Chi and Yoga. Um, Falun Gong is, was, and it still is, a social phenomenon. Because Falun Gong has no hierarchy or organizational structure, it doesn't involve money and doesn't really keep membership. No one knows exactly how many practitioners they were in China. But in 1998, the State Sport Administration estimated that there were 70 million to 100 million practitioners in, Falun, uh, in China, more than the membership of Communist Party. Now this is a major reason why Falun Gong was targeted by the Communist Party and uh, such a huge independent group was unprecedented in a communist uh, community, a communist party uh, regime history. And this explains how organ harvesting could come about. With potentially millions of Falun Gong practitioners incarcerated in China's vast network of prison camps, they become worth more death than alive. Their wor organs were worth money. They, they are blood typed and when a blood match is made, they can simply be led away and killed or simply put under anesthesia to have their organ removed while they are still alive. Um, the mass killing that we're talking about today is not an abstract concept. The victims are real people and they're innocent Chinese citizens. I know that prisoners of conscience sometimes give people um, the impression that these people are prisoners, but we are talking about innocent Chinese people. That was uh, Anastasia Lin in 2015. But since then, the updates will just keep coming out. The corpus and body of evidence uh, it's, it's quite uh, profound, really quite, quite profound. Oh, amazing. Yeah, I think one of the challenges they have is that more normal people can't really grasp that there would be this kind of evil, you know, running so much of the world right now in all of our countries. And um, if well, I, one of its main camouflages is that, that people can't imagine that this would be happening. 
Absolutely. And through a 2006 report and many uh, other reports, especially on China Organ Harvesting Research Center, um, ChinaOrganHarvest.org, uh, they give a list of whistleblowers. One was a Chinese medical surgeon who witnessed under the cover of darkness, guarded by the Chinese army, that, um, as you heard by Edward McMillan Scott, that the, the, the Chinese Liberation Army is responsible under the the guys under the the, 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 the the leadership of the communist regime, the gang of scoundrels, which are the evil head of the communist regime, which is Jiang Zemin in Bo Xilai, who was the mayor of one of the largest uh, cities and the most deadliest um, uh, persecu persecuted cities of Falun Gong practitioners, where they would kill the Falun Gong, plasticize their bodies, remove their organs, and then plasticize their bodies, and then sell their bodies to the multi million dollar uh, uh, body world exhibition so um, what is and, it's, and most people don't know what that is so what what are you talking uh, about the the body world have you ever seen it's a, it's, it's a worldwide exhibition of bodies that are performing uh, in different uh, ways like some some of some bodies they're live bodies dead people but live Chinese bodies that are put in in, 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 in different positions like play tennis soccer watching TV, even having sexual uh, uh, um, intercourse. It's really, really, really eerie. And how, they do they pre how do they preserve them? They plasticize them. So, you um, mean they're shrink-wrapped or what? Uh, they're actually plasticized with um, um, what do you call a pl uh, plastination. It's a, it's a plastination process. This um, is a kind of embalming, I assume, right? Exactly. In China. And one of the perpetrators of the Falun Gong persecution, the, one of the, the original pers uh, uh, perpetrator, his name is Bo Xi Lai. I actually was involved in an assassination attempt on our car when, when, when he was traveling to South Africa in, in 2005, dealing with business and uh, affairs uh, uh, in, in, in South Africa. And we were on the way to serve him uh, papers, basically, to say, listen, uh, we know you're doing it. We just wanted to make it clear to him because we knew he was there. And on our way there, he uh, arranged, he knew we were coming to him and he arranged an assassination attempt and our driver got shot in the foot. That was a big thing in 2005. Anyway, um, he is behind and his wife is behind the embal embalming and the fascination of hundreds and, I mean, countless numbers of fallen on practitioners' bodies and then sending them off to the body worlds, which are touring uh, the world um, in New York, and so I think it's worth it's a sixteen million dollar business. So that's really interesting. I wonder what the audiences watching those shows think they're seeing. Yeah, very eerie, very yeah. eerie. If you if you look at Body World exhibitions from the uh, and Epoch Times or Body World exhibitions Falun Gong, you'll uh, you'll get a very big insight on that. And as I was saying about the medical surgeon, the whistleblower, he witnessed um, at least five to 7,000 following on practitioners carted in, in, in sealed freight containers, cuffed to the railings, handcuffed like rotisserie chickens to the, to the railings of these cattle cars and shipped to the state-mandated hospitals and uh, labor camps throughout China and these death camps throughout China. Um, it was really, really bad. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, people yeah. think the only thing like that was Hitler's work, but that's not yeah. true. This, this is a lot bigger. A lot bigger. It's a, it's a Nazi-style Holocaust, absolutely. And um, yeah, Falun Gong has become it was was uh, was ordered by the Chinese communist regime's uh, military dictator and leader Jiang Zemin uh, to be eradicated within three. Uh, three months, and it's now lasted 19 years persecution. And what's even more terrifying, ladies and gentlemen, and hard to believe, that a Gestapo, a Chinese Gestapo-type agency, was created by the evil head of the communist regime, the main perp perpetrator of the Falun Gong persecution, uh, that literally declared war on Falun Gong to kill them for their organs and make a fortune. Um, the 610 office was created on June 10th, 1999, one month before the official Kristallnacht, or crackdown uh, of the persecution, the brutal persecution of Falun Gong began. Uh, on June 10th, 1999, an office, the Sapo type office was created, called the 610 office, that's still, to this day, right on top of the party system that controls the government system, 
and that is in control of every political, social, economic policy mandated in China from that day on to this day forward to completely focus utterly on Falun Gong. It was created specifically to destroy Falun Gong because Falun Gong is tied completely to every single entity in communist China since 1998, that, uh, since 1992, uh, 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 since Mr. Lee introduced the practice. From 200 people to now 100 million people, outnumbering the number of people in the communist regime by 30 million people. So that was one of the main reasons mm -hmm. why outlawed. And then the ideology, of course, where Falun Gong teaches truthfulness and compassion and tolerance. It's a complete stark, stark contrast to the, de to, the, to the demonic nature of the communist regime that he believes in a murderous past, destruction, nepotism, bribery, inciting hatred, and just killing um, without any regard. And the third reason is because when you practice Falun Gong, your body becomes really healthy, your organs become rejuvenated, and uh, they started to kill hundreds and thousands of Falun Gong. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious, too, how close is the current uh, communist regime in China connected to the ideals leading to utopia that Marx and Engels talked about? Oh, very much so. Um, the, Marx and Engels basically it was inherited. And, that, and, and, this, and this, this is where, the, 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 for those who are very avid readers and would like to know about more on this, the, chi the, the nine commentaries on the Communist Party it can be read and it can be viewed as well. This will really blow your mind because Marx, the Paris Commune, which is a gang of scoundrels, um, all infiltrated into China through as a Western import. And David uh, Mathis talks about this as well. The next clip I would like to play for you. But yes, it's very closely tied. They're all closely tied. And the same uh, reign of terror that you have seen, the, the same... Marxist ideology that has destroyed millions of people in the Soviet Union, in Stalinist Russia, in, uh, in um, China, is now flowing into America. So is, is the government still telling people that if they just obey, it's going to be utopia and everything's going to be great? They, uh, they are running out of deception because a lot of people are waking up. Uh, we've made They've noticed it's not getting great so far, right? Correct, and actually, a lot of people already, as much as, as much as it's trying to infiltrate and, and trickle down as into the states, a lot of people are rejecting the modern thought, the the um, the identity politics, the the, the Marxist cultural, uh, uh, the communist the communist communist policies. They can see right through it, and the and, and to tell you the truth, not one Chinese person in China is really interested in communism in, in, in either anymore. Even in Vietnam, as, you, as where I am, they're not interested in communism anymore. They want Western uh, capitalism. They want freedom. They want to voice their own opinion. There have actually been protests in Vietnam because the communist regime wants to create a, um, or the Vietnamese Communist Party from China wants to create a, a, a censorship camp, a censorship, internet censorship uh, uh, um, uh, uh, a firewall, just like in China, and the, the, the Vietnamese do not want that. They don't want anything to do with that. Okay, so tell us again what the clip is, and then let's hear that. Absolutely. This is David Mattis um, in 2016 at the 2016 joint uh, at, at the Scottish Parliament talking about um, the organ harvesting and his evidence. This okay. is the uh, this is a really profound gentleman. He is very quiet. He doesn't really say much. And he's a very serious fellow, um, but he's a Nazi hunter and um, a 35-year international human rights lawyer and a Nobel Peace Prize nominee, uh, one of the investigators of the Falun Gong. And so here we go. We wrote a report in July 2006, a second version, uh, January 2007, a third version in book form under the title Bloody Harvest, November 2009. A... Um, a, a book, a collection of essays uh, that came out in uh, August 2012. So there's uh, a lot of material. The two reports are posted on the internet, and, and the books are available uh, through. Uh, it can be purchased, and 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 obviously, in the few minutes, it's impossible to sort of give you the wealth of detail that supports the conclusions. But let me just say a few things uh, about that. The, uh, when is the telephone calls? Uh, we had callers calling into China, investigators, pretending to be relatives of patients needing transplants. 
and uh, asking the hospitals if they had organs of Falun Gong practitioners for sale. And we got admissions throughout uh, out China. Yes, we do. The, the reason the callers indicated they were calling was that Falun Gong is a set of uh, exercises, the practitioners are healthy, their organs are going to be healthy, and the callers uh, were pretending to be relatives of patients that needed these organs. So we got admissions throughout, tape, uh, throughout China, taped, transcribed, translated, saying, yes, uh, Falun Gong organs for sale. Now, the, the Chinese government did an, a documentary uh, responding to our report, and in that report, they interviewed a couple of uh, people that we called. One of them was Lu Goping. So they present Lu Goping a transcript of the call, and he says, yes, I got the call, and yes, I said most of these things, but the, the stuff here and there about Falun Gong, uh, I didn't say, uh, accusing us basically of fiddling with the, uh, the transcript. But there's no acknowledgement that we have him on tape and, and no explanation of how we possibly could have interwoven seamlessly what he, uh, in his own voice, what he denies having said and what he admits having said. Yet for the Chinese people, all they would see is this uh, propaganda documentary and certainly not uh, uh, our report or our website, which, which is blocked in China. So that's one piece of uh, uh, evidence. Uh, a, a second piece of evidence is, is, is blood testing. Uh, we, we found uh, that um, Falun Gong practitioners uh, who, who got out of uh, prison and not out of China told us systematically they were blood tested and organ examined uh, and it wasn't for their health because they were being tortured. But it uh, is necessary for organ transplants because you need blood type compatibility and I Ideally, tissue type compatibility as well. The uh, and uh, the, the people who got out of prison who were not Falun Gong practitioners told us the same thing that the people they saw in prison who were Falun Gong practitioners were going through these tests and they were not. And and we found this uh, we found practitioners around the world telling us this. Uh, and it wasn't the matter a uh, matter that was of immediate concern or interest to them because they weren't. Uh, harmed by the blood testing. In fact, uh, what they wanted to talk about was their torture, and it took a while to sort of find out from each of them uh, by talking to them that this was systematically happening. And, of course, these people didn't know each other, hadn't talked to each other, and, and yet we found this pretty pretty regularly everywhere. And uh, so that's a second factor. A third factor is the numbers. China, in terms of transplant volumes, is number one in the world after the United States. Waiting times are very short, uh, whereas everywhere else they're very long. And China, until this year, didn't have a donation system. Where are the organs coming from? Well, uh, the, the Chinese government says prisoners sentenced to death. Well, what's the death penalty uh, numbers? They won't tell you. Uh, we do know that they've been going over t down over time because they've uh, changed the procedures to centralize death penalty from regional courts to Supreme Court. They've cut down the number of death penalty offenses, but transfer uh, volumes uh, have remained constant. The, uh, there's no national organ um, donation system. There's, there's a huge amount of uh, hepatitis in, in the prison system, uh, which makes a lot of the organs unusable. And, and uh, we estimate that about, uh, in order to supply 10,000 organs a, a, a year, the, there'd have to be death penalty volumes of about 50,000 a year. And, and uh, the highest estimates of death penalty volumes in, in China are about a tenth of that. Uh, so uh, th there is no uh, a explanation uh, uh, other than the uh, one we've come up with, uh, the uh, Falun Gong prisoners. The Falun Gong prisoners, uh, they represent a huge population within the Chinese system in the hundreds of thousands. Uh, they don't self-identify uh, to protect their immediate family, uh, which means that the relatives don't know where they are and the jailers don't know who they are, so they're extremely vulnerable. They are uh, subject to extreme vilification through hate propaganda, which means that they're depersonalized and dehumanized and marginalized. So uh, we have this uh, very vulnerable population. Uh, the, the last uh, factor I'll mention here, although there's much more one could get into, but, but it's, it's relevant to uh, the jurisdiction of the uh, Scottish Parliament, is that as we look around the world and in China about the precautions that should be put in place to prevent this abuse from happening, they're not there, neither in China nor elsewhere.
the we don't have a, in China. Obviously, uh, one can see that uh, if, if one knows the system, China. We don't have the rule of law. There, there, I mean, when we started, the law itself didn't require consent from prisoners for sourcing from organs. They did change that, but there's no way of forcing that, uh, enforcing that. There's no uh, traceability. There's no uh, records. There's no access to records, uh, and uh, so there's no way of determining whether there's consent, even if uh, they, they assert there's consent. Uh, and uh, so we don't have uh, the system in place in China to prevent it, and we don't have the system in place abroad to prevent transplant tourists from going into China and participating in uh, organ transplant abuse. There are some uh, legislative proposals in some countries to deal with it. Uh, Israel enacted a law to that effect, and it's something the Scottish Parliament could do. Uh, health is a res is 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 a devolved domain. It's not a reserved domain. Uh, the Scottish Parliament, in its devolved de domain, can enact extraterritorial legislation, and it's done so for female genital mutilation. So, so uh, it, it already has legislation about organ transplant abuse called the Human Tissue Scotland Act, which it could simply uh, amend to encompass uh, a, a foreign uh, transplant abuse. And it would send a message, it would be an example, it, it would help to establish a, a, a network to prevent this sort of abuse. So those are my very brief remarks. Thank you very much. So that was David Mattis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yes. Um, so what was the response to his presentation? Very, very well. Um, but Scotland is still looking into uh, um, banning forced organ tourism. There's only been four countries. Like I said, the first one on the list, and a lot of people after, these, after my talks or my uh, sharing, they say in the comments, well, Israel is this and Israel is that. No, Israel is not. Israel is one was the first one who banned organ tourism. Now, there is a very Zionistic... Uh, um, uh, uh, faction in Israel because Israel is very diverse but the Knesset along with the Rabbinic Council and Jacob Levy who is the president of the Transplantation Society in Israel part of the Medical Association uh, wrote laws enacting forced organ harvesting and even into the insurance policies of the uh, everyday uh, Israeli citizen that bans any forced organ uh, any to organ tourism to China so that was actually very good. Then Taiwan, Italy, and Spain. Scotland is going to be behind them, I'm sure, very soon in the near future. Canada, and hopefully the U.S., because U.S. Tour organ tourism is skyrocketed, skyrocketed. Um, and so we're trying to get President Trump, who is actually on two. Th it, it, it was was funny enough. He wrote a law uh, for human trafficking, pedophilia, and mentioned the Falun Gong organ harvesting. But we're trying to get to him. Um, because Obama was very weak. Clinton, I don't even want to mention that communist spy, excuse my language, but I can tell you right now that he, she, 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 she was absolutely a shill. And uh, George Bush, well, George Bush was George Bush. But uh, hopefully with President Trump, um, they, had a big, they had a big rally in, uh, the, in Washington, D.C., uh, the, the Falun Gong, uh, um, on, on, on the, the anniversary of the 19 years persecution, which actually st uh, was July 20th, 1999. And through that rally, uh, President Trump's motorcade was there. So he saw the full uh, uh, shebang of ending communism and the forced organ harvesting. So hopefully he'll do something about it because the Justice Department knows about it, the CIA, the FBI. I had to sit down with the Federal Bureau of Investigation actually in, uh, in 2004 or five, I believe, um, because my car was broken into, I was, my my phone was uh, was bugged. Um, I received death threats. A couple of my friends were houses were broken into as well, and they were beaten. Um, long term Falun Gong petitioners from China, and uh, I had to sit down with the FBI. I, 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 um, uh, two men in black, and one from Taiwan and one from America. And I'll never forget what they said to me. They said, "You know, you do a great job, Mitch. Keep going. Keep doing your thing." And uh, no matter what happens, because the communist regime sent me a, 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 um, a message through an international uh, uh, translator and the Beijing official said that if you, if you continue doing your efforts, we will come after, we'll come after you and we'll also kill more Falun Gong petitioners. And that's what really chilled me to the bone. They, they, were killed, they, they even outright announced. And they and figured that's, that's the best thing to tell you to get to you to stop because you care about all that, exactly. all of that happening. 
Exactly. And a Taiwanese uh, 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 FBI agent said, you know, we, we know full well that in the Confucius Institutes, which is which is a communist mouthpiece, so a friend of mine is actually doing a, uh, a, uh, a project to to rally against them to protest, and they're actually being closed down. They're not getting the funding that they need because they have been exposed as uh, uh, basically uh, disguised CCP, Chinese Communist Party uh, associations, and uh, they're not universities. They're ridiculously uh, they're evil. And um, the Chinese student associations that have been put into different organized into different uh, universities. With my university as well, it was in to monitor the activities and use, uh, made uh, made a spy, almost like a spy agency to not only control the students but to get different secrets into out of America and infiltrate. Uh, it's just really bad. Yeah. Yeah, and they've had some help from the previous administrations up to now too, right? In getting that done. Oh I mean, yeah. There's oh, yeah. a lot of discussion, or has been recently, about. Uh, the nuclear weapons that ended up being the capability for North Korea came with assistance and special programs from the U.S. Yes, yes, and, Cl and also Clinton, uh, under the NAFTA agreement, sold the entire manufacturing base of the American uh, society down the line to communist China. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and, all of these free trade agreements, which is one of the reasons that the current president is threatened with death, by the media all the time and other people is that the free trade agreements are it's another example of using words to fool people because yes. what free trade really means is that in America for example your industry is going to be destroyed that's the whole purpose of it exactly <laughs> you know it's not the thing to be fooled by that because it's not really i mean i'm sure rocket science is very legitimate, you know, important field, but it's not rocket science, as they say. It's really simple. It, it's just that if you're having to pay $20 an hour or $50 an hour to your workers and another country is having to pay $1 an hour um, and you have free trade, what do you think is going to happen? Your country is going to be gone. Exactly. Yeah. It, as well as well as the progressive, the so-called progressive progressive movement, it's ridiculous. It's a it's a communist, Marxist, leftist ideology that's straight out of the playbook of communist China. Yeah. And it's 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 ridiculous. It's just like socialism. It's democratic socialism, which they yeah. have the. It's like their graduated income taxes of is an actual plank of the communist manifesto, right? Hundred yeah. percent. And it's just ridiculous. That's why it's so important to read. The nine commentaries on the Communist Party by the Epoch Times, and the Epoch Times has actually done an updated version on how the evil of communism has ruined and is ruining the world, and has infiltrated into America. All that we're talking about right now. Um, so now, yes. Now, what about the the visitors that go to China now, corporate visitors and things like that, that are specifically shown that there's no such thing like this going on? Do you know about that? Yes, especially the Transplantation Society, the Board of Directors, the World Health Organization, the United Nations, the governing bodies, the diplomats, they all are, are, are bribed, they all are lavished with goods, they all are made to keep silence, even the Vatican, Doctors Against Forced Organ Harvesting, D-A-F-O-H.org, did a great report, have done great reports about how the United Nations have been, have, have been complicit, because China sits on the United Nations Council. At the UN Council and vetoes everything as well, and um, basically controls the the United Nations as well as the World Health Organizations that have refuted the evidence. I mean, it's just really disheartening and shocking that these people will turn their backs and stand on the, on the on the wrong side of destiny. From the diplomats to the State Department to the Justice Department to um, to the different media outlets to the uh, um, the Vatican, who has also made, has become complicit, not only in, in, in child trafficking and pedophilia themselves, right. um, but also in sex and, and child sacrifice. I was just sitting also in London with the ITNJ, the International Tribunal of Natural Justice, which is a court specifically created for child trafficking, hearing the MK Ultra victims and how the 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 uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the CIA, the CIA uh, uh, um, you know, leadership, and they were they were there, and also the uh, the bankers, one of the big, the huge global bankers uh, who uh, defected and have has exposed the pedophile elites, and 
anyway, sitting there. So the Vatican has been complicit in not only the child trafficking, but also the organ harvesting. So they all know, they all fully well No, but do they do anything? No, because it's very sad, it's very unfortunate. I'll never understand why people are so cowardly and so shameful. And yes, they can, you know, it's, 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 it's different, Richard, if you are, when you, are, you go along with it and you don't know. You don't know anything. But once you know and you're really complicit and you're, and you're literally consciously doing this evil and consciously covering up this evil and consciously being fake news media like the Communist National Network, like CNN, you know, because they, there are certain journalists and there are certain reports, I won't uh, discredit them completely, that have come out against forced organ harvesting and have written reports about uh, 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 Falun Gong, which I take my hat off to certain individuals. Um, but the, 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 they are few and far between. Yeah. And um, I just never will understand people who will constantly cover things up and stay on the right side of destiny. Don't they understand history? Don't they see what has gone on with people who have constantly made money off these persecutions and made money off this complete genocide, which is a new form of genocide with the Falun Gong, and see it all collapse in front of their, their eyes? I mean, don't they see that they're only looking forward to their, uh, to their demise? I mean, they're very unfortunate. I they're think there's a real um, a critical shortage of spiritual awareness. You know, right. there may be a lot of religiousness around in different forms, but... Um, that's different because a lot of the the people that uh, I've been attacked by the most and in other times, you know, planning the various criminal activities and stuff, they've been extremely religious. But the, if if they get, which is probably what Falun Gong is about, if, if they get in touch with more self-awareness on a deeper level, which, which is the same as spiritual awareness, because if you're aware of yourself, it leads you back to where you really came from. And, and once you get to past a certain even beginning point of that very early, you can't go along with any of this stuff. It's not an option. Right. It, it's, it's, yeah. Exactly. No, I, I agree completely. Um, it's very few and far between of, the, of spiritual awakeness. Um, a lot of fake virtual signaling hypocrisy and fake uh, 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 compassion out there and complete double standardry. But... Um, like I said, that's why I take my hat off to, to you. And I, I was just wondering if there's, one, if there's time for one more clip. Yeah, sure. It, it just tell us what it is. This one is from um, Professor Wendy Rogers. She's a clinical director in Australia about the forced organ harvesting in China. She just backs up the claims of Ethan Goodman and David Kilgore. I think it's a great testimony from her as, as being interviewed as a clinical psychiatrist and uh, researcher for many years and uh, Pretty, pretty high level up in, in Australia, and I just wanted to share it with you. Okay, sure. That, that sounds great. Okay. What seems to be unusual about China is that, and I think Ethan Goodman makes this argument brilliantly in his book, is, is how the, the Chinese government have solved two problems at once. They've solved a problem of organ shortage along with a problem of dealing with a, a quite annoying dissident population um, by using the one to, to source the other. And it's done on such a wide level at, with a involvement at all levels of government that it's state sanctioned, it's turned, as what Ethan says, it's turned doctors into murderers um, and used health reasons to, 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 to persecute and, and kill um, a, a group that they're not happy with. It's extremely difficult to find evidence about what's happening in China because it is such a secretive system. At the moment, however, though, we've got three reports that have come out over a period of 10 years. The first in 2006, Bloody Harvest by David Kilgore and David Mattis used an, a, a wide range of evidence and particularly relied on phone calls and interviews and website um, scrutiny to look at what was going on in China to establish um, the, the nature of the trade there. Then Nathan Gutman did his investigation called The Slaughter, which was published in 2014, and he um, used a different methodology. He interviewed people who had come out of labour camps and put together a very detailed picture which he fitted into the political background um, of China and built up a very compelling story of how the two things had come together, the persecution of the Falun Gong and the rise in transplant medicine. So that was two sources of evidence. Following that, in 2016, we've had a new report published called The Update, 
with um, Bloody Harvest the Slaughter, the update, which is available free to download. And this is an exhaustive report, 600 pages with 2,000 references. And in this report, the authors who joined forces, so we've got um, Mattis, uh, Gutman and Kilgore, have tried to document the extent of transplant activity in China using a number of innovative methods. So they've looked at the number of hospitals that are licensed to do transplants, the number of hospitals that are not licensed but are nonetheless doing transplants, the numbers of beds in the hospitals, the number of medical staff in the hospitals, reports of how busy the doctors are, reports of bed utilisation rates, and reports of profits being made by transplant in individual hospitals. In terms of, of, of withholding credibility from practitioners of Falun Gong just because they're practitioners of Falun Gong, it's a, an instance of what, what we call testimonial injustice. It's like not believing someone because of who they are rather than because of what they say and the reasons that what they say might be true. And again, I, I put it down to the the... the, the the skill of the Chinese government in demonising the practitioners of Falun Gong within China, so that they're, um, as I understand, you know, can be ostracised or considered to be bad citizens, bad people, um, and so you shouldn't believe anything they say. But they've also sold that to people who who should be able to take a far more critical stance, who haven't been subject to years of Chinese brainwashing, um, and who should be able to say, okay, it doesn't really matter. Um, what this person's spiritual practices are, they're providing me with evidence and I should listen to this evidence and take it at face value um, initially. Of course you're sceptical if you think someone's trying to um, tell a story to further some, um, some political ends, but again, as Ethan's explained, there's no evidence that Falun Gong is a cult of any sort. There's no evidence um, of, of, of political action to try and bring down the Chinese government. Um, there's no evidence of anything other than a, a deep desire to be left alone to practice um, their spiritual beliefs in peace and to not be locked up and murdered. And so it, it, it it seems a very unpleasant and evil form of victim blaming um, to, to withhold credibility just because people are practitioners. So that was Wendy Watches. Uh, yeah, she's mentioned uh, turning doctors into murderers, right? Yes. And that's actually going on all over the world because the current medical system, uh, which most people couldn't imagine, is actually not wonderful and benevolent. Um, it's all based on drugs and injected poisons that say right in the literature and sometimes on the major government websites well it may kill you it, it could you know give you a heart attack or make your brain stop working or all these things but it's fine and just a, in america they say ask your doctor what's right for you and you take all these uh, toxic chemicals to become healthy or have them injected into you that's even better and when they do too much damage we'll have to start removing your organs and well, we they're not even Falun Gong practitioners at all. Well, we've got to love those. We've got to love those vaccinations. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Australia is really far along towards what, exactly what she's talking about. Even though Falun Gong is not involved, I mean, they're taking people's food money if they won't allow their kids to be injected with whatever the government says. I know. It's, it's totally it's amazing. Vaccinations. I know. It's, it's it's so sick. Yeah, taking their welfare. So, yes. and now the other thing that strikes me is um, I think anybody who has a normal little bit of compassion left in general wants to support those who are being persecuted wrongly and based on incorrect information. Uh, it reminds me of something that might not seem connected, but it really is. It's gotten me a lot more people hating me recently is that in America, our media is this huge. Uh, organization that, that spans all the supposed different perspectives, uh, left and right and conservative and liberal, and they're all showing their unity in demonizing any movement toward waking up in our country. Yeah. And one of the things is they don't want anybody to be able to uh, have rights of self-defense. And all of these regimes like in China and other places that want to kill their population they have to disarm them first, right? And so, one of the things they want to do to move it toward that with the communist movement in America is demonize any uh, firearms rights organizations. So, Correct. I thought this is being done to the NRA and the GOA and other really good 
self-defense or oriented organizations in America. And so I recently joined a couple of those just because they're being attacked and demonized. And I think it's the same with Falun Gong, even though they're really very similar. You know, Falun Gong is self-defense by self-empowerment and consciousness. Wow. And, and I think it's connected, from what you've said, to some of the ancient tradition of beautiful uh, consciousness traditions within China, right? You haven't said much about those, but that's a very interesting connected topic. They're kind of getting back to that. You know, some of the brilliant sages that we're talking a long time ago. Absolutely. And, to, you know, you just nailed it. Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, it's, it's, it's Falun Gong was a biggest, the biggest threat because of the self-empowerment, because of the self-independence, because of the self-liberation, and because of the moral servitude and rectitude that came from the practice and the philosophy and the moral grounds that fundamentally brings a better society. And how stupid... Can, can any kind of regime be in this world to not support something that is beautiful, something that is peaceful, something that is beneficial to their, 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 their citizens? But the communist regime is a demon cult. It's not even a religion. It's a cult of cults. It's a reign of terror. It's a mutational toad that was created to destroy and will will be completely, uh, will collapse because that kind of evil can only exist. Any kind of evil regime in this world that has uh, ro that has raised to the level, rose to the level of that of that kind of evil, will fall. Um, any gangster that came, Gotti, Al Capone, these kind of people will fall, just like the communist regime will fall. Uh, the Roman Empire and the Nero killing hundreds and thousands and countless numbers of Christians. The Hutu regime, I mean the Mugabe regime. ISIS, they're all being, they all will be destroyed. They all will be, uh, uh, all, will, all will collapse because that kind of evil cannot triumph. And I admire Falun Gong practitioners. Like I admire um, courageous people from the past. They will stand up to um, play spiritual beliefs. And I admire you, Richard. I, I really do. You and Doug. I really, I really admire you guys because I tell you, I reach out to so many people and I, I, it's just wonderful to be on your show to you, with you tonight. It's such a blessing, and I sure would love to come on again. And to everybody who is listening, if I can say a few words, God bless you. Thank you for so much for, for sharing with, for allowing me to share with you. And I know you are so busy in your lives with your children, with your business, with your colleagues, with your students. But man, I just I'm so happy that I got to share with you in your hearts and that you know about Falun Gong and that you can do everything to spread the word and share and even write and sign a petition and people will say to me, Oh, what are you talking about? A petition? That doesn't do anything. We're gonna bomb China, we're gonna invade China. What's that what what is a petition gonna do? But a petition, as Shakespeare says, this the 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 the, 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 the pen is more mightier than the sword, my dear friends, my dear my dear uh, listeners. <laughs> so right. it's like it's like signing a a, a a a check or signing a will. Sign a petition is pledging your support, pledging your position to stand on the right side of destiny. So um, you know if you go to one of the the, the websites, stoporganharvesting.org or in transplantabuse.org or Doctors Against Force Organ Harvesting.org, D A F O H dot org, you can you can sign one there, even just to look up the information. Okay. And I would think uh, to practitioners of Falun Gong, there's no rule that you have to leave your old religion, right? You can be whatever no. religion you want. You can, it actually it actually Falun Gong actually enhances your religion. You know, there are many Christians, Jews, Buddhists, you know, atheists you can do whatever you want. You can, okay. you can be a practicing Buddhist. So, so the reason I ask that is, just like I did with the NRA, why doesn't everybody just join Falun Gong since they're being so persecuted? Start investigating it, start trying it out, see what the exercises feel like. Just do it as a health practice if you want, but yes. you know the idea of a harmonious and um, peaceful, non-aggressive uh, emotional, mental, and spiritual outlook is actually good for your spirit, for your physical health, too. So, exactly. why, doesn't it, why don't the rest of the people in the world, including us, just join Falun Gong? And it's going to be that much harder for them to wipe us all out. In the future, I'm sure, yes. As a practitioner of Falun Gong, I come from a Jewish family. 
I, uh, you know, I don't, you don't have to give up anything. There's no giving up anything. It's not like it's a cult or a sect, as, as you've heard. Um, you can do whatever you want. You can come if you want. You don't have to come. You can learn the exercises. The books are really highly recommended. They're free of charge all, uh, you know, on the internet at fallenduffer.org. You can um, uh, join any uh, uh, practice site. People, volunteers will teach so, you the exercises. So what, what's one or two of the books that you think a beginner should get to learn about it and start being able to practice a little bit? Uh, the, the, the book is called Falun Gong, basically. It's the first book of Mr. Lee Hong Tsi. He's the founder of Falun Gong. If you go to uh, falundafa.org um, and Falun I didn't. I didn't quite hear the whole thing. Say that slowly. Uh, the sure. Uh, the first site is um, Falun Info, F-A-L-U-N, info.net, faluninfo.net. And the other one where you can get the book Falun Gong um, is falundafa.org. Falundafa.org, yes. D-A-F-A. D-A-F-A, yes. That's the other name of uh, the practice. It's got two names. It's, just, it's, it's the same practice, but just two different names. And was it .com or .org or what uh, was it? Dot, dot, dot .org. Dot yeah. .org, okay, great. Falun, dot, dot .org. And oh. the book, is, yeah, the book is called Falun Gong. And the main book of Mr. Lee is called Juan Falun. It's also, you can download it as a PDF. Um, yeah. What's it called again? What's the book? Uh, Z-H-U-A-N. Z-H-U-A-N. And then Falun. F-A-L-U-N. Uh, Juan Falun. Beautiful books. Highly recommended. Um, it's just really, really nice. Really good. Uh-huh. Well, I wish I could think of that scene in some kind of a movie where there's some heroic figure is about to be arrested and killed. And the troops get there and say, okay, who is such and such? And everybody says, "I'm that's me. Oh, that was Spartacus. That was, Spartacus, uh, Spartacus. I'm Spartacus in this. So, no, I'm Spartacus. Arrest me, you know. Yes. Um, why doesn't everybody just do that with Falun Gong? Say, no, we're all Falun Gong practitioners. Because in China, to protect the identity of their families, their colleagues... I don't mean there. I mean oh, here. Absolutely. All the other countries. We need, we, we need more people to do that, yes. And there's, and there's been protests, peaceful protests all over the world. But yes, that would be a great idea. Um, when, if you go to... Uh, they usually hold candlelight vigils near the Chinese embassies. They also have whole big group practices, um, um, you know, to just show and commiserate commemorate the, the, the anniversary of the persecution of Falun Gong by handing out flyers and being on a, uh, they have a beautiful uh, a Tiangao uh, marching band where, they, where they, they play through the streets of New York. It's quite profound, it's quite admirable and beautiful. Um, all the music and they do the exercises. So if you're around the world and you see this, stop by a booth, learn the exercises, right. sign a petition, and get a flyer, talk to your colleagues. Another thing what you can do, uh, Richard, if, if, if it's possible for your listeners, if anyone is a reporter out there or a CEO or a university professor, if you want me to go through Skype and talk to your university professor, uh, uh, students, if you've got a lecture on, on ethics or Chinese uh, relations, um, you're doing a project and you would like me to share with you, look, we've got the technology to do it. I would love to come through to share. Um, also, Richard, I would, I would also... Um, I'd love to get on any other talk show in the industry if you know any talk shows. Okay. Just, 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 just spread, spread the word. But how, just how, do you, how do you want people to contact you? Um, you can contact me through my, uh, through my, through my email. Um, my email is m for Mitch, m Gerber, like Gerber, the Gerber baby food, m g e r b e r 444 at gmail.com. Um, or through my Facebook. I'm on Facebook, uh, Mitchell Nicholas Gerber. Um, Mitchell Nicholas Gerber on Facebook. Okay. You also mentioned, you know, that some people might think, oh, well, that, this is all terrible. We have to militarily attack China. And what I wanted to respond about that to remember is that most of China is not these evil rulers. Just like most of America, well... Um, I was going to say most of America is not insane, and that's still most, I think that's true, although it's changing. But in most cases, you don't want to just go and kill all the people of a country. You want to help them get their freedom all over the world. 
and <laughs> by encouraging them in positive ways. Exactly. Ten ten percent of the pop ten percent ninety percent of the good are, are, are controlled by ten percent of the evil, and that's going to change um, because this poison can't last for long, and this. Uh, this demonization and this, and this weaponized propaganda machine will collapse. Right. Uh, in your practice of Falun Gong over the years, have you learned very much about the ancient culture and beliefs of China before things fell apart? Oh, amazing. And actually, there is a really wonderful show that is touring the world uh, called Shen Yun. S-H-E-N-Y-U-N. S H E N. Y U N, Shen Yun, the divine 5,000 years of culture and traditional ancient Chinese culture revived in this incredible show. It's the top show in the world now. It, it, it is uh, touring all over the United States. If you go to the, uh, the, the, the website, Shen Yun, you'll see the, uh, the dates. I highly recommend going. And through Falun Gong, I've learned such the, the, the music, when you practice the exercises, the music is beautiful uh, and ancient and traditional. Um, and it really brings the body and the mind to a state of peace and tranquility. And things, I've never experienced something like this before. You know, I'm not a religious buff. Um, I'm a spiritual man. I, 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 I like working out. I like adventure. I like swimming. Mm. I like martial arts. And learning Falun Gong is very similar to Tai Chi or yoga. And what I love about Falun Gong, after 16 years, there's no secrecy, there's no alienation, you don't have to give up anything, uh, you can practice, you know, whatever you want to practice, whether you're Buddhist, Taoist, Jewish, whatever. Um, there's no levels like Scientology or, you know, secret, you know, hierarchies. There's no, there's one teacher, Mr. Lee, who's a very genuine down-to-earth person, he's been nominated for five Nobel Peace Prizes. Uh, he's not a CIA agent. He's not a cult leader. Uh, the, the communist regime, along with minions, have tried to fabricate lies against him. And he's a, I've met him many times, and he's such a wonderful man, such a genuine teacher. And all he wants to do is just bring people uh, good things. And everything's free of charge. The website, the, the, the books can be downloaded free of charge. And um, uh, hot, the hard copies you can buy uh, uh, for $8 or whatever. It's very, very cheap or Kindle online. But... But if you go online, you can just start, you can digitally download the book PDF, um, and you can learn the exercises for free. And so, I highly recommend it. It's, it's it's changed my life completely. I mean, it's amazing. It's so beautiful, and just feels so good when you practice the exercises and the philosophy of truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance. What else is beneficial than that in business? I mean, when I when after I learn the exercises, you know, as an entrepreneur, I can take care of my family better. I can. I, I, I'm more positive. My workers, my employees are better. Like they, they, they feel better with me. They, I've encouraged people. You know, my, 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 my business partners, my colleagues, my manufacturers. You know, when I'm in business before, now I'm just traveling and working for media and trying to get the word out even more. But people feel much more at ease with me, and I feel much more at ease with them. Uh, and so it's beautiful. All through practicing Falun Gong. You're talking about the um, emerging of a new set of archetypes for people to emulate instead of the ones that were being given by Hollywood and the media that say the best heroes are the best killers now. And they're being fair and they're including women, of course, too, so they can kill everybody, too. And you're saying, well, m there may be a different kind of heroic ideal that you could, you know, approach rather than just becoming the most vicious. So, I Absolutely. think that's exciting. Maybe, maybe for coming back on, if you want to, we could yes. talk about more detail of both Falun Gong and the incredible uh, tradition in China and other places like that, that w were really going in a good direction before and could be brought back and built on. It will be, and that's why if anyone uh, can see the show Shen Yun, go, spend the money, it's a top show, it's been nominated. By, by Bill Bo I mean the by Oscar uh, uh, award-winning actresses and actors and Broadway critics and top dancers and I mean you can't believe just type in Shen Yun on YouTube and you'll see uh, it's it's an amazing amazing show that's won the hearts of millions of people around the world 
um, learn the following long exercises, read the books, and yeah, look up uh, the research on the, on the organ harvesting. Go to fallinfo.net uh, and fallindafa.org and stoporganharvesting.org and, 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 and look up forced organ harvesting in China. There's a really good um, YouTube uh, channel as well called China Uncensored with Chris uh, Chappell out of New York. Uh, that's really, really good too. Um, so we have all the evidence and it's just people need to, to, to really get on board and, and, and take the initiative to read and take the time to read. Um, and um, yeah, and all the documentaries are also out there as well. Uh, um, so uh, it's very easy to research. You've got the access only in China, under, only under a totalitarian regime like China is it outlawed and banned. But in all the other countries around the world, even in Vietnam, you can look at the websites. Uh, it says it's communist Vietnam, but uh, it's more of a, of a, of a, of a shade of, of, of China. But China is the worst. North Korea is the worst. So, but here you can read and study. And read. Okay, sounds good. Well, thanks for all the time and for staying up this late in the part of the world that you're in. I appreciate it very much. And um, oh, shit. I appreciate you, my friend. You are amazing. We'll to, hopefully we'll get to do it again really soon. And well, I would just ask you to um, expect a call back if you're still awake in about 15, 20 minutes, and uh, we'll do a message for the club at that point. Wonderful. Will do. Thank you, everybody, for listening. And uh, check out all the websites and everything, all the material. And thank you very much. All right. We'll talk to you soon, Mitchell. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Bye. Okay, guys. That was uh, Mitchell Nicholas Gerber. I really appreciate you maybe hanging on till the end here or coming back in pieces as you were able to, to be with us. Um, I think spirit like that is a better archetype to um, be inspired by than the, the ones that just say we should all kill each other and I don't think that's really a very good idea, although you have, you have to uh, keep the ability to be defensive when needed um, by whatever means you have to. But the main thing that we're trying to do is get rid of uh, the kind of divisive hatred that is being sold by the people that are offering the utopias and things like that and bring back sanity before it's all collapsed. And I love having people like Mitchell on the show because it gives you an example that anybody can do that. You can do it within your own environment, within your own workplace, within your family, uh, not by trying to convince everybody of anything, because you're just going to get more fighting that way, and there's no particular virtue in that, but by being something so different that it's just going to affect people even if you don't say a word. It's like, <clears throat> yeah, there's a lot of atrocities that are going on that Mitchell was talking about, which are important to know about, but it's not saying, you know, necessarily go kill the people doing the atrocities. It's saying fighting for what you love is a lot more powerful than fighting against what you hate. And we're not supposed to remember that principle, but it's really true. And that kind of fighting is based on becoming something. It's not about worrying about what we've done by mistake or incorrectly in the past. It's being aware of that and then correcting it and becoming much more than you thought you could become, because as long as you don't think it's impossible, you can do it. So I, I would encourage everybody to um, read the book, study the literature, support the Falun Gong people by adopting whatever you learn from their teaching that is useful to you. It's not, not like having to change religions or something. It's just learning something that's practical and useful in your life to help your physical health, your emotional well-being. I'm definitely going to find time to look into it more, and uh, hopefully we'll have Mitchell back to support us. I um, hope you'll share the archive on whatever platform you got it on. And remember, if we disappear from the conventional platforms, find us at real.video, which is a contribution of Mike Adams. Uh, substitute real, you know, without the censorship. And check up on where we are elsewhere by going to lostartsradio.com. Uh, find out about the club, lostartsradio.com slash club. If you want to go to the next step with all this stuff and work on yourself with more focus. But uh, you don't have to do that. You can also just look at our YouTube channel or as long as it's there or a Facebook page 
anywhere you can find our free videos. We're going to keep making more of those. Um, let us know what you think, comment, um, complaints, questions, whatever you want to say. Uh, we just want to stay in touch with you, and I'm basically really grateful for um, the chance to be with you for this amount of time. Thank you, Anna. Let you go back to whatever you are doing now, and um, I hope everything goes great for the remainder of your existence on this planet, certainly for this week, and I hope you'll be back. And remember, on Sunday, we'll be able to play some of these live streams in audio form for anybody that missed part of them and can't see the live stream for some reason. Other guests will be on the uh, Blog Talk channel as well, so keep up to date on that. There's always an announcement for the upcoming show at Blog Talk radio.com slash club um, probably forgetting something important that I wanted to tell you I took a few notes during our discussion with um, Mitchell and we're going to get much more deeply into it when he comes back again so stay in touch and uh, email me if you have any important feedback or anything you want to say at all I'll read those as I read all of them and we'll respond as time allows uh, Richard at lostartsradio.com and uh, remember that every minute in your life, you're, te you're the teacher by who you are, and out of that comes what you do. So, we'll see you next time. 